The disappearance of Zuko and Azula's mother has been one of the biggest mysteries in the Four Nations, but she wouldn't be gone forever. Where is my mother? Ursa was from the small Fire Nation town of Hira. She was the daughter of the local magistrate and the granddaughter of Avatar Roku. Even though her grandfather was an Avatar, she had no bending abilities at all. Instead, she lived a quiet life as a stage actor with her soon-to-be husband and childhood friend, Aiko. But everything changed when the Fire Lord arrived. Almost a hundred years prior, Avatar Roku's family went into hiding after his death. They knew Fire Lord Sozin would begin a search for them along with the next Avatar. Sozin's son, Azulon, eventually found Roku's family and brought his own son, Ozai. The Fire Sages told Azulon that his son and the Avatar's granddaughter could begin a powerful firebender bloodline. Ozai proposed a marriage, and Ursa didn't have a choice. She was forced to leave her family behind along with her fiancé, Aiko. Ursa married Ozai and pledged her undying loyalty to the Fire Nation royal family. Shortly after, they had two children, Zuko and Azula. It's important for us to spend time together. Don't you think so, Mom? Yes, darling, I think it's a good idea to play with your sister. Go on now, just for a little while. As a princess, Ursa spent a lot of time with her children as they frequently played and took vacations to Ember Island. While Ozai, on the other hand, was training them to become powerful firebenders. Azula became a firebending prodigy. She developed advanced firebending much faster than Zuko. You'll never catch up. My father says she was born lucky. He says I was lucky to be born. You waste all your time playing with knives. You're not even good. Put an apple on your head and we'll find out how good I am. As a genuinely kind woman, Ursa never stood for Azula's misbehavior. Fire Lord Azulon. Can't you just call him Grandfather? He's not exactly the powerful Fire Lord he used to be. Someone will probably end up taking his place soon. Young lady, not another word. What is wrong with that child? But Zuko was not like his sister. He and Ursa were very close. <clears throat> I failed. No, I loved watching you. That's who you are, Zuko. Someone who keeps fighting even though it's hard. Despite her love for her children, Ursa had never forgotten about her hometown. She had been secretly writing letters to be sent back to Hira. She entrusted a palace servant named Elua to have them delivered. But not a single letter made it home. Elua was actually hiding the letters under Ozai's orders until one letter revealed a shocking secret. Zuko's father was actually Aikum? It didn't seem possible, but Ozai needed this to stay quiet. He ordered a Yuyan archer to track down and assassinate Aikum. Months had gone by, but Aikum was never found. He hadn't been seen in years and was presumed to be dead. Meanwhile, Ozai's brother, General Iroh, was in the middle of the siege of the city bossing Sei. If Uncle doesn't make it back from war, then Dad would be next in line to be Fire Lord, wouldn't he? Azula, we don't speak that way. It would be awful if Uncle Iroh didn't return. Taking the city would have won the war for the Fire Nation. But Iroh abandoned the siege after his son, Lu Ten, was killed. He found out his son died and he just fell apart. A real general would stay and burn Ba Sing Se to the ground, not lose the battle and come home crying. Because he abandoned the siege, Ozai saw his brother as a traitor. He asked his father to revoke Iroh's birthright to the throne. You dare suggest I betray Iroh, my firstborn, directly after the demise of his only beloved son? I think Iroh has suffered enough, but you? Your punishment has scarcely begun! Grandfather said Dad's punishment should fit his crime. You must know the pain of losing a firstborn son by sacrificing your own. Liar! I'm only telling you for your own good. I know. Maybe you could find a nice Earth Kingdom family to adopt you. Stop it! You're lying! Dad would never do that to me. Your father would never do what to you? What is going on here? 
I don't know. It's time for a talk. Azula told her mother she overheard what Azulon said to Ozai. And Ursa knew this time Azula wasn't lying. But Ursa made a deal with Ozai. She helped conspire a plan with her husband to assassinate Azulon. Ozai would take the throne in exchange for Zuko's life. But Ozai had one condition. Ursa would be banished from the capital city and she couldn't take her children with her. If she tried to escape with the kids, or if she ever returned, Ozai would hunt her down. Mom? Zuko, please, my love, listen to me. Everything I've done, I've done to protect you. Remember this, Zuko. No matter how things may seem to change, never forget who you are. Your mother did vicious treasonous things that night. She knew the consequences and accepted them. For her treason, she was banished. Ozai became the new Fire Lord, and Ursa wouldn't be seen for years. Where's Mom? No one knows. Oh, and last night, Grandpa passed away. Not funny, Azula. You're sick. And I want my knife back, now. Huh! Who's going to make me? Mom? Several years later, Avatar Aang ended the war by taking away Ozai's firebending, and Prince Zuko became the new Fire Lord. Zuko tried getting Ozai to spill information about his mother, but he wouldn't break. After a year, he went to his last resort, Azula. <laughs> After the war ended, she was institutionalized under Zuko's command but he knew she was his best chance at finding their mother. Ozai told Azula about Ursa's letters that he kept locked away. The letters contained information about Ursa possibly heading back to Hira. It was the first lead they had in years. Along with Aang, Katara, and Sokka, Zuko and Azula embarked on the search for Ursa. Their first day on the journey wasn't exactly the smoothest. After a battle with a giant wolf spirit, Zuko discovered something while Azula was asleep. She kept the letter Ursa wrote to Ikem, revealing Zuko is actually his son. If this was actually true, it would mean Zuko wasn't the rightful heir to the throne. Azula would become Fire Lord. To make matters worse, Azula was hallucinating about her mother. I know what you really think of me. You think I'm a monster. I think you're confused. All your life, you've used fear to control people, like your friends May and Tai Lee. Her paranoia led her to believe Ursa and Zuko were conspiring against her. Fear is the only reliable way. Even you fear me. No, I love you, Azula. I do. <laughs> Eventually, they made it to Hira. Disguised as drama historians, they began to ask strangers if they knew anyone named Ursa. That's when they met a stage actor named Norin, who was wearing a very familiar prop mask. The name Ursa was familiar to him, so he invited Team Avatar back to his home where they met his wife Noriko and their daughter Kiyi. Noriko mentioned that there were rumors Ikem wasn't actually dead, but traveled to the forgetful valley a forest home to the heartbroken. Team Avatar set out for the forest. When they arrived, Aang felt a strong spiritual presence. He felt whatever resided in that forest must have been extremely powerful. And he was right. They met Misu and Rafa, two waterbenders who came to seek out a powerful spirit. Misu researched an ancient spirit with the ability to change people's faces and identities. The Great Spirit revealed herself to them, the Mother of Faces. Azula asked what became of Ursa. The Spirit revealed Ursa came to her and was given a new face and identity. Norin and Noriko were actually Ikem and Ursa. Five years prior, they had their identities changed by the spirits. Ursa's memories were erased as well, so she had no recollection of Zuko or Azula. Now Zuko was certain where his mother was, but Azula was nowhere to be found. When Zuko returned to Noriko's house, he revealed his true identity. 
That talk didn't get very far, though. Azula ambushed the family and confronted her mother. Zuko tried to defuse the situation, but ended up pushing Azula too far. She pleaded with Zuko to hand over the throne, but he said the throne was his destiny, not hers. She ran off and disappeared into the forest. All of a sudden, the Mother of Faces returned. She asked Noriko if she wanted to return to her original face. And Noriko said yes. She was once again Ursa, with her original face and memories. She told Zuko how proud of him she was and thanked him for finding her. She also told him the truth about Aiko. He wasn't actually Zuko's father. It was a ploy to trick Ozai. Regardless, Zuko had accomplished his mission in reuniting with his long-lost mother. Zuko brought Ursa and her family back to the Fire Nation capital, where she received a hero's welcome and finally reunited with Uncle Iroh. Iroh gave her the strength to confront her ex-husband. Ursa went to Ozai's cell, where she told him she would no longer fear him. She was once a prisoner in the Fire Nation. Now, it was his turn. That wraps up Ursa's timeline. Check out Zuko and Azula's family tree for the full story of the Fire Nation royal family. And don't forget to subscribe for all things Avatar.